Okay. And we're back. Okay, so talking about the oxidoreductase reaction, I'll just do a quick little review recap of what we talked about to start in the beginning, or the end of last video. Uh, it's the class of enzymes that catalyze oxidation reduction reactions. Oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is the gain of the electrons. So in other words, they're involved in transfer of electrons or hydrogen ions or hydrogen ions. So it's all of these, they're all saying the same thing. These are being transferred um, together. Generally, they're called as oxidase, dehydrogenase, reductase, monooxygenase, or dioxygenase enzymes. So all those, mark those down in your notes, those are all just AKAs of the same thing, oxidoreductase or oxidase enzymes. In this typical, so in this example here, uh, we have ethanol that is being oxidized to form acetaldehyde. Uh, this is a really common example that you'll see a lot of um, sort of in, in tests or in other stuff and other reactions that you'll see um, uh, in this class. So we have NADH or NAD plus, sorry, NAD plus is used as an oxidizing agent, which oxidizes ethanol. So the oxidizing agent is what is going to be reduced to allow the oxidation to occur. Okay, so let me repeat that. So the oxidizing agent um, will be reduced so that the substrate can be oxidized. And this is the kind of the way that they will ask that question. So for example, um, in, in the following reaction, referring to this one here up to the side, which of the following is the oxidizing agent? And the answer is going to be NAD plus. Now where it can get a little bit confusing is that they could also have the answer choice of NADH. The reason why NAD plus is the better answer is because this is currently, this is in, this has not reached its reduced form. If you try and reduce ethanol using NADH, it's not going to work because it already has that hydrogen, already has those, those electrons attached to it. So the oxidizing agent is the NAD plus. Okay, so don't get confused on those types of questions because that, that will get thrown at you. Same thing that you can see that if it was FAD plus and between FAD plus and FADH, because then you can have the same question. So the, for example, in the following reaction, which of the following is the oxidizing agent? NAD plus. And then you could, all, but you could also have the question, which of the following is the reduced form of the oxidizing agent? Now our answer is NAD, NADH because it is now in the reduced form. So just kind of think about that a little bit um, as you as you, as we go along. Okay, <clears throat> so ethanol. NADH gets along. We have um, our alcohol dehydrogenase. Remember, dehydrogenase is one of our AKAs for an oxidoreductase, abbreviated to ADH. So the ADH is our enzyme. ADH equals our enzyme. Our NAD plus is going to be our coenzyme and then our end product so then our and our substrate is ethanol and our product is going to be acetyl acetaldehyde acetaldehyde NADH has the coenzyme for the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. ADH is an example of an oxidoreductase class of enzyme. Sweet. 
Um, you might even want to be able to break those up a little bit more where oxidase or dehydrogenase, so oxidase and dehydrogenase are more like the oxidative and then reductase because they, they're slightly different. We're in an oxidizing reaction versus a reducing reaction, you know, are slightly different. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Now the transferases. A transferase class of enzyme uh, is used for group transfer type of reactions. Remember we're talking about groups, we're talking about those functional groups. The, the, the alcohol, the OH, the um, amine group, the amide group, the, the rings, all those sort of stuff, all of those gr wonderful functional groups. This typical reaction shown here is an important reaction in glucose metabolism. So it's the breakdown of glucose to give us energy. Actually, it is a two-step reaction. In the first step, ATP is hydrolyzed to form ADP and inorganic phosphate. The energy released from the hydrolysis of ATP powers the transfer of the phosphate group to the hydroxyl group. Okay, so we have ADP is going to get broken down to ADP um, with magnesium right here acting as a remember it's a, a magnesium is a metal so take a minute is it a cofactor or is it a coenzyme it's a cofactor because to be on fear factor you have to be a little metal so the energy released from the hydrolysis of ATP powers the transfer of the phosphate group to the hydroxyl group attached to carbon 6 of the glucose molecule and forms glucose 6 phosphate this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase hexokinase which also requires magnesium as a cofactor hexokinase is an example of transferase class of enzyme this uh, i believe it's one of the last units that we do in this class um, is glycolysis um, but when we get eventually when we get there these enzymes that participate in glycolysis are going to be very 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 important of all of this I wouldn't worry don't worry too much don't memorize this this specific process I would however know that hexokinase is a transferase group um, is part of the transferase class of enzymes. So this line right here is an example of transferase class of enzymes. And also uh, later on eventually we'll want to know glucose about glucose 6-phosphate, glucose 2-glucose 6-phosphate. That eventually will become something that we will um, go in depth into and, and really, really know. Now we get into the hydrolase. The hydrolase class of enzymes are used to break a typical chemical bond with the power of hydrolysis obtained from water breakdown. So this class of enzyme breaks various chemical bonds such as ester, ether, peptide, glycosyl, acid and hydride, CCC halide, so CH, uh, phosphorus, oxygen, phosphorus bonds, etc. The typical reaction shows, shown here describes how a peptide bond, remember we're talking about peptides, we're talking about amino acid chains, um, we're talking about proteins, is broken in the presence of water molecules, or water of a water molecule. Hydrolysis of water molecule releases energy. This release energy is used to break the peptide bond present in a peptide or a pep protein. Chymotrypsin is the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction. So we have the peptide bond right here, poly in our polypeptide. Water comes in. When water is broken, the OH and the H, this also releases energy, and that energy is able to break, using the energy of this being broken down, it's able to break that bond and separate them. And that, remember, if we're looking at it now, N double H. NH2 
and COO minus, right? Our carboxyl and our amine groups. Lyases. A, the lyase class of enzymes catalyze removal of certain groups from substrates by a mechanism other than hydrolysis. They break various chemical bonds like CC, CO, CN, CS. Often this type of enzymes catalyze reactions that form or break double bonds or a ring structure. Form or break double bonds or a ring structure. In the example shown here, fumarate produced in the Krebs cycle is converted to malate, another Krebs cycle intermediate. The double bond is fumarate. In fumarate, is broken to form CC single bonds. In malate, so it's the double bond breaking. This reaction does not need, does not, that's the key, does not need water hydrolysis. <coughs> Isomerase. The isomerase class of enzymes catalyze transfer of groups within the molecule or catalyze structural rearrangements within the molecule to form isomers. Remember, isomers, it means it has the same chemical formula, but everything is going to be in it. It's going to be bound together differently. So all the same components, but kind of rearranged, including optical, geometric, or positional isomers. Different varieties of isomerases include epimerases, racemases, cis-trans isomerases, mutases, etc. I would, in your notes right here, include all of these. Looking for, the, so knowing those names will help you identify, especially mutases. You'll, you'll often find um, either the word isomerase or mutase will be pretty common um, ones that you will see. In the example shown here, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, DHAP, an important intermediate in glycolysis isomerizes to form glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, or G3P. DHAP is a keto compound containing a phosphate group. This is now isomerized to form a glyceraldehyde, an aldehyde compound containing the phosphate group now attached to its third carbon. So it changes then where sort of that, it just, like I said, it just rearranges the structure of the enzyme to allow for the other later steps of glycolysis to occur. And that's because you want to think about the, the word when we're talking about glycolysis, glyco, glucose, olysis, lysis, so the breakdown of glucose. Ligases, ligases are the class of enzymes that catalyze the formation, catalyze the formation, so now this is our different we're catalyzing the formation of bonds instead of the breakdown, such as CCCOCNCS. And this is by condensation, coupled to cleavage of ATP. So cleavage is just a fancy word of saying breakdown. So we break ATP um, in order to form new bonds. <coughs> of ATP or similar coenzymes. There's another one that's called GTP. Um, we won't really, GTP isn't like one that we use super often. It's not like, it's not our main source of energy and it's just one that occasionally you'll see thrown in there as a source of energy, but um, I wouldn't worry about that one too much. Don't You don't need to worry too much about GTP, just focus on ATP. Note here that ATP is hydrolyzed by a hydrolase class of enzyme. So in this case, the ATP itself is hydrolyzed. You have water. Ligase means joining or binding or linking. In this example shown here, bicarbonate ion and pyruvate are condensed to form oxaloacetate. It is again a two-step reaction. In the first step, ATP is hydrolyzed by a hydrolase enzyme. So we talked about the hydrolase enzymes earlier to form ADP and, and uh, free ion of phosphorus and releases energy for condensation. ATP hydrolysis powers this reaction. Uh, the pyruvate carboxylase catalyzes this reaction. That's our enzyme, our enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. And the pyruvate carboxylase um, is an example of ligase class of enzyme. And this enzyme is going to require biotin as a coenzyme. So why is this, remember, why is this a coenzyme and not a cofactor? 
because the coenzymes are our vitamins. And which B vitamin is biotin? So remember the new, uh, the one that we have, one, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, and 12 are all of our different um, B vitamins. And we have tall, rich, nudists, play, pickle, ball. Biotin is our B7. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do another cut here. We went over those, um, all this is a little bit, a lot of information to, to digest right there. So I'm gonna do another pause, um, let everybody kind of digest that, and then we're gonna get a little bit deeper into kind of how the enzymes work. Um, and then a little bit as well, kind of their their role, and then um, like their here we go the enzyme kinetics. Okay, this is a really long chapter, so just a lot of information to cover, but really really important stuff um, in order to understand a lot of our our future um, things that we're going to talk about. So I will see you in the next one.